that's looking nice. Got it? Mm -hmm. Watch your belly. Hit it. All right. So even though it's pulling right here, then it seals, and it leaves a little bit of a pucker here, it doesn't matter. It's drawing around here is what we're concerned with, getting a nice tight seal. And if you think you need to, you can take your nylon and coax it in a little bit just to make sure that you got that in there real nice without over thinning your plastic. This drew in really nice. Now that it's semi-cooled, I'm gonna go ahead and just coax it a little bit. Right here, you can see how nice this drew from the tooling piece around it. And then right here. This is a real key with our lock, is making sure you get a seal through this area. This is the most, or the easiest area, I think would be the correct term, to lose vacuum, is right through here. Because it's such a tight area where the lever release is, to where your plastic or even a lamination is at, that that, that spot, is always highly likely to give you a problem. But you can see, using the nylon underneath here, that drew in really nice and really nice around here. So what we'll do, I'll sand this, I'll pop out my screws, I'll take my tooling piece out, I'll cut it, get it nice and loose, and pull that plastic off of my lock. Now I've got a utility knife, brand new blade, nice and sharp. Typically when you're doing this Serlin inner, you don't have a big thick inner piece right here. It's um, relatively thin, eighth inch, sixteenth inch, it's not real heavy. So a utility knife will cut this fairly easy. You could use a cast saw, but you, you really want to be careful that you don't cut into your lock and how you cut around that ring. All I'm going to do is just cut around this ring. And this plastic's fairly soft, and it's not very thick. Like I said, I put a, a new blade on here to make sure I could cut this easily. And the key is to know that you've cut it all the way around. And I'm just right in the middle of that groove. I'm not trying to be real perfect about it, because I'll be able to look at it after I get my plastic off of my lock body. And the reason why we're going through all this is we've had customers who have pulled plastic around the lock and then laminated over it. And you can't do that because you're still not making a perfect seal at the base of the lock onto your socket. And as soon as you open this up to put your lever release, you have all this exposed edge in here and if there's any leakage here, it travels right down the outside body of the lock and right out those edges. This is part of the reason why we've got away from leaving it smooth like this. So when we do laminate and the body of this plastic is really scored and roughed up, that resin, epoxy resin, will bond to that a lot better and you'll get less to no airflow down through the body of this and then back out the side. Okay, I'm going to double check to make sure I'm cut good. The utility knife won't make it through and into our plastic and hurt our lock. It'll just put a score line in that groove and there's nothing wrong with that. Now I'm cut all the way around. It's still going to be difficult to get off of there. So I'm going to come up here on this corner and cut back toward my groove. Just like that. And that'll make that easier to get off because now I don't have a perfect circle I'm trying to remove. Now if you're doing this and you happen to pull your lock off, make sure you glue it back up and get it locked back in there and on securely. We had a real nice pull here. It really conformed in well and it locked in well. Now that's garbage. So now I'm going to double check my groove. Right here I'm a little heavy. And I want to open that up a little more. I'm just going to kind of clean this up. I'll go around it. There we go. Right there, I can see my groove real nice. All I want that plastic to do is just make that first lip. Now we've got a really nice place to make a seal. 
This part of the process is 100% of the key to getting this socket ready for elevated vacuum. You have to make a seal in here and it has to be correct. So when you do this part, you make sure that you are completely sealed around this with your, with your urethane glue. Now that we've got our groove cleaned out and everything cut away, I'm going to take my coyote quick and run a bead all the way around that groove to make sure I get a perfect seal. Because you have to seal this right here. If you don't, you're going to get air back up inside your socket and you won't be able to run elevated vacuum and keep your pressure withheld. So I run a real nice bead in there of my coyote quick and I'll take my finger and smooth it out and check it to make sure I've got a nice seal. Just like that. Excess on the size doesn't matter. We're using a, a urethane because the urethane bonds to our epoxy resins and acrylic resins. You don't want to use a silicone in here because the silicone won't bond to the resin and that's the whole key of using this is so it will bond to it. So you're making a seal plus you're getting your lamination to stick to that ring you've just made. Then as you seal that in you want to pay attention to where your easy off lock release button goes. So you keep that little square piece right there nice and clean. That's the one area you don't want to mess with. Now that we've done that and after it sets up we're going to sand all of the surlin plastic that we've pulled on our cast and we're going to do it in the same manner that we sanded our lock housing. We're going to rough that up and I mean rough it up by cat scratching it. Really score it hard so that epoxy will get in there and bond to it much better than it will if you just dull it. I can't use my blade and scratch it like I've done here on my lock housing but we're going to take a shear form and go over it and really get those scratches and grooves in there. So you go over it with 100 grit if you want to, to dull everything up nice, but then take your 24 grit and get in there and really score it. Since our plastic's thin enough, the, the paper I'm using right now is a 24 grit, and I'm really scoring it hard with that 24 grit, hitting all the surface, making sure there's no area with shine on it. You want to pay special attention to your proximal brim area to make sure you don't have any areas that can break loose when you're done and you cut it out. So I hit my transition line and go clear above it. It's okay to sand above where you're going to cut it out just to make sure you get a good bond. So basically go over all of your plastic. Don't be afraid to score it. You don't want to cut through your plastic but you definitely want to nail it hard. The other suggestion that was brought to me by companies that are doing this method is taking a shear form and scoring the plastic with a shear form. I used a half round and I used a flat and the half round was definitely more aggressive and did score it. You can see fuzzing on the plastic. It worked really well with the shear form. You can't get into your undercut areas with it as well, but that's where I take the 24 grit and then double check all my undercuts to make sure I've got real good abrasion on my plastic. So the last thing I'll do once I'm done abrading my plastic is go where my ring is where I sealed it with the coyote quick and it has a little bit of a sheen to it so I'm going to take some 100 grit sandpaper and dull that up a little. Just make sure that you don't pull enough of it away or you, you sand enough of it away that you cause an air gap in there. You still want that seal but it's okay to dull that surface. There's some excess on the plastic, it doesn't matter right there. So when you get done, if you think that you've possibly disturbed your seal, go ahead and run another bead in there and wipe it out with your finger. Now right here where the lever goes in, your locking assembly, pay close attention to it as we've described throughout the whole video. Don't be afraid to oversand that area right above where it goes in because that's your problem spot for drawing in air.